I'd like to welcome you to virtual worship with the Congregational Church of Brookfield on the second Sunday of Advent. This is the Sunday we light the peace candle. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. So part of that vision and mission is to offer a wide and generous welcome to all. So we want you to know that no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And we're delighted that you're joining us for worship today, whether on your tablet or TV, computer or phone, know that it is the Holy Spirit that connects us in the communion of Christ's church. Pastor Jen's meditation today will help us hear words of both comfort and call that come from God through the words of the ancient prophet Isaiah. Today's worship also includes special piano music from our music director, Tony Sullivan, and a beautiful encore performance of Springs in the Desert from our chancel choir. We're grateful to our lay leaders who also join us in worship today as Advent candle lighters, scripture readers, and more. Today's worship also can, includes an opportunity for us to join together in a service of home communion. So we'd invite you to find whatever is convenient and feels appropriate for you and your family to share as we join at Christ's table. We also have a separate um, and special children's worship each week. Today, we will hear a message about the way God provides for us, which features the art of one of our own young people. Our kids will have the opportunity to participate in our live Zoom church school too. If you or someone in your family wants to receive the password protected link for those gatherings on Sunday mornings at 930, you can contact the church office at office at uccb.org. Later today, on Sunday, December the 6th, we have a special opportunity to gather outside in a physically distanced way for our annual Christmas tree lighting. If you'd like more information about how you can register to join us for this opportunity for faith and fellowship, you can visit our website at www.uccb.org. You will find information also about our other programs and ministries for people of all ages as well on the website. And you can email our church office at office at uccb.org or reach out to me or Pastor Jen if you have a joy or concern that you'd like us to lift up in prayer for you next week. And now, may the Holy Spirit center our hearts and draw us together in worship. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them, them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give God thanks and praise. Remembering the promises of Christ brings us peace. Let, Let us, us lift up together the light of peace. Friends, will you join with me now in the spirit of prayer? God of hope and peace, we thank you that you gather us together across time and distance. We thank you that you are strong and bold enough to speak words of peace into our lives and into our world that so needs it. When we are anxious and feel unmoored, help us to focus on you and your care. And when we look at the world and the places that are hurting and lack peace, 
Help us to know how we might best share your love and follow you as those you call to be peacemakers. We know that when we follow you, it is possible for faith and righteousness and blessing and peace and hope and wholeness to come together. And that we can be those who help to make that happen by putting to good use the gifts you have planted in us. So we pray that in this time, you would open our minds and hearts up to the wisdom, guidance, forgiveness, and direction you have for us, so that we will be some of your love bearers, justice workers, and peacemakers in your world. We pray this in the name of your son, Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will you pray with me? Holy One, thank you for gathering across distance and time with others who long to hear your word and to follow your way. During this time, help center us in the light of your love and in the comfort and inspiration of your spirit. Help us to hear your word and of comfort, call and peace in these words shared today. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term and that her penalty is paid, that she received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up. Every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recommence before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lamb in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. And now may God bless our understanding of these words. Amen.
Friends, will you pray with me for a moment? Holy One, in these moments, help us to be still and to know that you are God and that you are here present among us. Settle in us all that seems unsettled so that we might truly open ourselves up, our hearts, our minds, our lives, to the words that you have for each of us today. Amen. So I have done and do a lot of driving. In my younger days, it was between home and college, home and seminary, home and internships all over the state. And now it's my commute between Naugatuck and Brookfield. And if you know anything about traveling nearly anywhere, especially in Connecticut, it would seem, you know that any route usually comes with a whole lot of construction. It seems that once a road is finished being constructed, it is time to fill in potholes or expand something more, and so the cycle begins again. Now, in my younger years, construction meant a delay in arriving at my destination, and I would think that was an awesome opportunity to listen to good music or to people watch and consider what was going on in the lives of those in my neighbor cars as we inched ahead together at a snail's pace. Now, with a bit more responsibility on my shoulders, husband, kids, dog, housework, sports mom, volunteer commitments, the schedule has become a bit more packed and therefore tighter. So I'm not always so good about having the patience I once had during my commutes. On my worst days, I say a few choice words to myself and get frustrated and angry that I'm not getting anywhere faster. On my best days, the news seeps in from the radio, my mind drifts a bit to to-do lists, and I even find some moments to pray and spend some intentional time with God. So let's just acknowledge here that it's a good thing that over the last 15 years, my root has become deeply etched into my subconscious. So at its worst, construction can stall things for a time, drive us up a wall crazy and make us frustrated and on edge. At its best though, construction, whether in our morning commutes or perhaps more importantly in this context, in our lives and relationships with others and with God, opens up space for new opportunities and a more direct path to where we're going. When the valleys are lifted up, the mountains and hills made low, the uneven ground level and the rough places plain. Dare that I am bold enough to say, because there are times when I certainly choose unwisely, perhaps, that the choice is up to us and how we look at it. Whether we will allow frustration and anger to seep in and take over, or whether we are patient and try to see the gifts in the moments. Whether we look at it as another thing that messes stuff up, stuff up for us, or whether we allow ourselves to relish the Advent moments of waiting to see what might come next to sit in what Rob Bell calls the liminal spaces, where we are on the threshold of something that is potentially pretty big. So as we read the scripture passage from the book of the prophet Isaiah and his disciples in Bible study, and as I've thought about more what the Spirit is saying through it, I have found myself thinking it's about two main things. It's about the construction work we are called to do in our own lives and in the world in order to be open and make the space for God to work in and through and among us and to make the way plain for those who need some extra assistance or direction. And it's about the comfort that comes from knowing that God is everlasting, has shown up throughout time and continues to show up today, offers us grace beyond measure, carries us gently when we need to be, saves us from ourselves when we can't get out of our own way and affords us strength when we need it in order to fulfill the call that God has for our lives in helping to bring about the kingdom here in whatever way we can. Now, it's believed that these words, the words from our scripture were spoken to those Israelites who were exiled in Babylon after the temple was destroyed. They had gone from a people sure of themselves and their future perhaps a bit materially minded due to the prosperity of old and overly self-confident, to people who were discouraged and despairing. They were once again awaiting a new and better future, a return to what was to their home and their way of life. It was a time of need, a time when they needed consolation, when they needed a word of hope to sustain their faith. And into this time, God speaks to the prophet. 
Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, speak tenderly to their hearts and tell them that this time of sorrow has more than paid for the sins of their past. That soon a way will be made plain for the Lord to come in glory to save them, that God will rule with both power and gentleness, collecting, carrying, and leading them to a better time, leading them in God's way of love and justice, of hope and of peace. Doesn't that message sound good to you right about now? Comfort, oh comfort my people. Speak tenderly to their hearts and tell them that this time of sorrow has more than settled up the account, that following in my way of righteousness and care, of love and responsibility through a lens of faith for one another, and helping to make the way plain will get you out of this mess. That there are better days to come, even if I have to scoop you up and carry you there myself with my mighty yet gentle arms. As people of faith, I feel like this is a welcome message of comfort, and yet it's also a message of call. God isn't going to do all the work for us. We have to partner with God in this work, too, as the prophets did all those years ago. And that's where the construction work comes in. Sometimes it's in deconstructing old messages and beliefs and reconstructing new ones that better fit our hearts and minds and the world in which we live. Sometimes it's seeing where there are needs, looking at the homeless and the refugees, seeing the veterans who struggle with PTSD, partnering with our LGBT and BIPOC folks to learn and understand their lived experience, and to make the way plain for people by partnering with organizations that may meet needs, emotional, physical, and spiritual. Sometimes it's in recognizing our own needs, and reaching out to communities of care and support, family, church family, friends who can walk with us through the valleys, helping to lift us up and straighten the road ahead out a little bit more. Sometimes it's in seeing the small ways that we are called to be peacemakers, with a smile, a listening ear, space made for people to share, to see one another and to be seen. There is nothing easy about this construction work. When is construction work ever easy? On the physical roads of life, it takes heavy machines, lots of people power and years to make the valleys high, the mountains low, and to make a more direct path between here and there. And especially when we are sitting in the icky places of life, Lord knows we want the work to be easier and quicker and clearer. But long ago, God did not just come and talk to one prophet and say that it was his job to make the future better for the Israelites tomorrow. No, God spoke to a number of prophets and gifted a number of people with the ability to lead and to make tents and to be teachers and judges and weavers and mothers and shepherds who could work together to make a better future. And that is how God still works among us today, calling us together in community, spreading out gifts and passions that will dovetail with one another, working together to make the way to a brighter future to seeing God's glory a bit more plain. When we do that, when we come together, when we use our gifts, when we take responsibility for one another and for others beyond our walls, when we share about God's love from the high places and accept an extra dose of care when we are in the low places, then things start to look a little better. It might even feel like God's message of comfort is starting to ring true. So in the days ahead, may we be open to God's voice speaking to us, calling us to faithful responsibility, to hope and to community as we sit in this liminal space, this threshold moment when it seems like there could be something good ahead for all of God's people if we would but claim it and work together toward it following the example of Jesus Christ. May we be self-aware enough to know when we need to be challenged or when we need to allow ourselves to be rocked in the comfort of God's loving arms through the care and words of those who surround us. And may we, through our words and actions, make the way plain so others can see God at work in us, through us, among us, and around us. Amen.
As we enter into our time of prayer today, we want to remind you that we are not doing this service live, so these people have let us know their prayer requests in advance. We would invite you to email us at office at uccb.org if you have a joy or a concern you'd like us to lift up for you next week. We begin today with the sad news of uh, extending our prayers of comfort for the Rushmeyer family who are grieving the death of Nick yesterday. As many of you know, he had been on our prayer list for some time as he was battling resurgence of cancer and as he celebrated his 31st birthday this past Sunday, November 15th. Please do hold his parents, Larry and Sherry, as well as his sister Nicole and brother Cody in your prayers as they grieve through what will be a sad holiday season for their family. We will hope to celebrate Nick's life in a memorial service sometime in the spring. Similarly, we continue to pray for all of you who may be grieving the loss of loved ones, even some from several years past as we come up on a new holiday season. We do especially invite your prayers for the family of Sue's friend Liz, who lost her son Patrick recently. His life will be remembered in a service that Pastor Jennifer will officiate tomorrow. We also extend our sympathies to Donna and her whole family as they grieve the death of her brother-in-law, Jean, from COVID, and also to Tina, who's grieving the loss of her friend, Lori, from COVID. We also invite your prayers for Susan and Peter, who are grieving the recent deaths of two of their close friends, both Chris and Marianne, over the past two weeks. We're praying for those of you out there who are un, in an unsettled place in your life, if you are unemployed or facing financial worries, or if you're struggling with mental health issues or addictions or domestic violence in your home or family. We lift up special prayers for Nikki and Joey and Jacob and others who are looking for a job right now. We pray for those who are recovering from recent surgeries or hospital stays. We pray for Donna, who is now home from the hospital and rehab, for um, Kim and Sandy in PT after their recent hospital stays. We are praying for those who are going through cancer treatment for Kim, as we mentioned before, but also for Brian, Tanya's father, Manuel, Jared's young nephew, Gavin, for Susan, Sandy's cousin, Tommy, Kevin's friend, Rocky, young Haley, Christy's friend, and for Lou and Janine's daughter, Jen. We are also praying for Jill's friend, John, with a recurrence of brain tumors as he returns to Yale for some more treatment. We continue to pray for Roy's sister, Carol, and Haley's grandmother, Joan, in hospice care at this time. We lift up special prayers for all of our caregivers and their loved ones, for Shonda, for Kathy, Bill and Mary Lou, Linda and Ed, Bob and Janet, George and Nancy, for Marion, especially as she travels to be with family for the holidays, for Dan, for Larry, for Karen's father, John, Janine's sister, Valerie, and caregiver, Her Her Herb, for Beth's mother, Barbara, Tina's mother, Mary, Susan's mother, Marion, and for Stella and Tony in the UK. We pray for safe travels for all who are on the road um, during this season, but also for our returning college students, those working hard to the end of their semesters. We pray as well for our hurting and broken world so desperately in need of peace on this Peace Sunday. We um, pray for those who are in harm's way in places where there is war and sectarian violence, especially now in the Horn of East Africa, in the South Sudan, Somalia, Ethiopia, and Eritrea, as well as for refugees in camps around the world whose dangerous living conditions are made so much worse during this global COVID crisis. 
We pray for those who are most affected in their lives by COVID right now, for those grieving the deaths of loved ones, but also for our medical personnel, first responders, and frontline workers, as well as parents, students, and teachers, those awaiting COVID test results are newly diagnosed, worried about loved ones. As winter weather seems to arrive with a fury this weekend, we pray for the homeless among us, including those left homeless by recent natural disasters, for fires and storms, and those who are fearing homelessness as they struggle to meet rent or mortgage payments or put food on their table and Christmas gifts under their tree. In the midst of it all, we're also grateful for our opportunities to reach out and to help others through our Giving Tree program and other ways that we can um, support our neighbors in need. We're praying a prayer of gratitude and joy for Karen, Lily, and Edgar, who have now fully recovered from COVID, and also for the joy of Edgar's new job. We're celebrating for many of us who have tested negative recently for COVID and for the health and strength and warm homes we have to live in. For those of us who are needing to mostly stay inside in quarantine until a vaccine becomes available. We also lift up prayers of gratitude and joy for the coming vaccine for those heroic researchers and pharmaceutical and public health workers who are working so hard to bring us a safe and effective vaccine as soon as possible. We're grateful um, also for our gifted and talented quilt fairy who provided the hangings for today's uh, art and for the joy it was to have our Advent wreath making event last Sunday in the parking lot at night. I'm grateful for mine that I have to be in worship today for the work of our CE committee to make that possible. We're grateful and um, giving thanks for our many worship participants who've been willing to share their gifts in today's service, including Allison and her family, Ella for her beautiful artwork, getting to see Corey again from Maine as our scripture reader. We're also um, grateful for all of the music that has been provided for Tony and the choir and our video editor and communion bread baker, my husband John, plus all of the wonderful Christmas pageant helpers who are working towards next Sunday's um, worship, including our church school coordinator Barbara, costume mistress Miss Debbie, and video editor Dave, making our Zooming to Bethlehem pageant get ready for next Sunday. We're also grateful for Morrison's gang and all of their hard work in planning to make us ready for our Christmas tree lighting later tonight. So now will you join me in a time of prayer together? Holy One, our good and great gracious God, God of all comfort and all challenge, we thank you for your faithfulness to our present generation, as well as for your support of your beloved people in ages past. All flesh is grass, your scriptures remind us, your great prophet tells us. And in this age of COVID and in especially our grief and loss, we feel the pain of that reality all too keenly. We know what it is to be mortal, and so we confess we struggle against the forces of change, even the changes of the season, whether it is resisting any small disruption to our daily lives or the turning of political tides in the wider world. Help us to know and follow your will and your way. Help us to not so much rage against the darkness as to lift up the bright light of Christ's hope. So as we do the waiting of Advent together, as we follow in the path of the faithful and anticipate your, com your coming into the world, gracious Lord, we thank you for the precious gift of your peace, which truly does pass all understanding. We thank you for the way your presence is made real for us in Christ's church. Your Holy Spirit 
still binds our hearts in a covenant of grace and peace, whether it is in text messages and phone calls, Zoom classes and recorded YouTube worship, or in small acts of kindness and caring, or in our Christmas tree lighting. We thank you for calling us together and meeting us exactly where we are as our beloved God with us, Emmanuel. Thank you for breaking into our human struggles, for working and guiding us to heal our broken and divided nation and world, as well as binding up our broken hearts as we suffer. We thank you for calling us into new life in Christ Jesus, for the many blessings you share with us of family and friends, the wisdom of our elders, the joyful energy of our children, the devoted service of so many wonderful church volunteers, our brothers and sisters in faith who make our many ministries of care possible. As we continue to walk together in faith, we pray that you would guide our steps, make the way straight and clear as your prophets have foretold, make the desert to bloom again, strengthen us to be your servants in the service of others building and rebuilding your kingdom of love through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray this and all our prayers. Amen. I love our church because the gifts of people of all ages are lifted up and recognized. Over the last 15 years, I have been blessed with the opportunity to work with our young people, to see the ways their gifts have developed and been called out and to see the ways they have put them to use in the world as nurses, teachers, engineers, store clerks, artisans, business people, philanthropists, and so much more. And I have the joy of watching our young people like Ella, whose art is shared here and whose art we shared about in today's kids worship come alive when she and others talk about their passion like art and when they're given opportunities to share those gifts and to serve others. And so I thank you for your continued support of our church, its ministries and programs, especially in this case, our church school, confirmation and youth programs and our young adult outreach that make it possible for us to get to know these amazing young people and to help build them up for God's work in the world through the exploration of their passions and the opportunities they are offered to serve others. And I give to our church because of these awesome opportunities and so many others that I get to be a part of. So on behalf of Ella, whose talent is made plain before you here, our other young people, our church school teachers and youth advisors and myself, I thank you and invite you to continue to share your gifts of time, talent, and treasure with our church family as you are able with joyful hearts.
we gather at this table for our home communion, we welcome you to join us. As you find elements in your own home that seem appropriate, we invite you to break bread with the family of Jesus Christ. All are welcome at this table of grace. We invite all seekers, all people who are longing for the light of peace to blaze brightly in this world to join us at this table. We come not because we must, but because we may. So let us joyfully receive the feasts of Christ's love. We remember how on the night of his betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to them, saying, This bread is my body, which is broken for you. Each time you eat of it, break it. Share it with one another, and remember me. And likewise, after the meal, he took the cup, and he offered it to them, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for love of you. Each time you drink of it, remember me. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for coming to us in the stillness of this hour, in the peace that you plant within each of our hearts. We pray for your blessing upon this holy meal, even as you have blessed generations of your faithful over the ages past. We pray that as Jesus poured out his love for the world, that you will pour out your blessing upon us and upon this communion. May we receive your hope, your peace, your joy, your love as we receive this bread and cup together. May all that we receive and all that we do be used for your service. Amen. Now let us join our hearts in a prayer of thanksgiving. Lord, we thank you that through the broken bread, our eyes have been opened in a new way to Christ's presence with us. And through the cup of blessing, our hearts have been warmed with the knowledge that we have been gifted with your grace and changed for the better. Having feasted together at this table, May we be more mindful of the many ways you are sharing yourself with us each day, whether by calling us to moments of rebuilding or moments of rest in your gentle arms. Help us to remain aware of the ways that you are at work in, among, and through us, that our relationship with you and with one another might ever deepen, and that your kingdom of peace and justice might ever expand. We pray this in the name of the one for whom we wait. Amen. And now, friends, may God comfort you when you are hurting and challenge and inspire you in times of rebuilding. May you live your faith, helping to open up space for God to break into your lives and into the world. May you know God's blessing and deep peace, lifting up the light of that peace for all whom you encounter through your words and actions. And may God watch between and among us until we meet again. Amen. Mm -hmm.